If there's one thing better than self-isolating by playing video games, it's self-isolating by playing video games inside of video games. Here's my list of the top 7 mini games. But first, let's give credit to these three honourable mentions. Viva Pinata's Romance Dance. If you picture a bunch of 15 year old boys gardening together on their Xbox 360s because that's just the game that came with the console and too bad you'll have to wait until Christmas to get FIFA, then you're looking at my 2009. Once you find a mummy and daddy pinata, you force them to romance dance, which is even more innuendous than it sounds. You then guide a little worm through a maze of contraceptive explosives and, if successful, create a baby pinata. Happy endings all round. Next up, Rugrats Search for Reptiles Mini Golf. And Space may as well have just called this one Nightmare Simulator, because seven-year-old me would have been less stressed playing Slenderman. I mean, who leaves their kids alone with this psychotic ice cream vendor? Want some ice cream? Psych! Not to mention Angelica's evil life. <laughs> hey, this is almost fun! Get your shit together, Stu. Nevertheless, I had to be brave like Tommy, because... We just gotta get the balls in the holes, and we'll get a whole mountain of ice cream. And in a tough debate between the nominations, Fallout New Vegas's Caravan, Stardew Valley fishing and Bioshock's pie packing. The third and final honourable mention goes to Skyrim's lockpicking. Because there's nothing more exhilarating than being down to your final lockpick and cracking an expert level lock to discover two coins and a dead skeleton. Is there any other kind? Now onto the list. Number seven, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4's Tennis. Yes, get that pal soon. You wish you played me in tennis, no? I know what you're thinking. In a game where you can dodge monkey doo doo, launch yourself off a mega ramp into a target in the ocean, and break into an aquarium as Django Fett using moon gravity, how does tennis make the cut? And you'd be well within your rights to dismiss me as some clueless hack with abysmal taste and click off this video right now. But if you've ever played Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4, you'll know that there's just something so satisfying about being humiliated over and over again by some smug tennis preppy named Bjorn who makes you want to throw your Kmart skateboard through your TV screen until you come back years later, older and much wiser to overcome the single most infuriating learning curve in video game history. Tout à l'heure, you have beaten me! Me! You must play me again! I must be given another chance! Number 6. Club Penguin's Card Jitsu The iceberg may have finally tipped on this one, but we'll always remember going head to head with Sensei using weaponized puffles and flaming hot sauce. This quirky little masterpiece consists of a rock paper scissors snow fire ice mechanic featuring special moves such as attacking your opponent with a surprise game of Dance Dance Revolution and repressing your crippling jealousy when your little brother gets card jitsu cards for Christmas instead of you. Number 5. Crash Tag Team Racing's Bowling Naughty Dog's no stranger to creating unforgettable minigames. I mean, just look at this slice of nostalgia from Uncharted 4. Yeah, yeah, your little TV game thing. I bet I can beat your high score. Crash Bandicoot. And let's give a shout out to their lesser known project, Crash Bash, which consists of nothing but minigames. Space Bash will have you TNTing Neocortex into oblivion, and Crash Ball will have you disowning your cousin for deflecting giant marbles into the wrong net. Yeah, it's Crash Tag Team Racing that takes the cake. It may have been the most phenomenal racing adventure game of its era, for you know, the racing and adventuring, but somehow I always found myself wandering back to the bowling alley. It took everything I wanted to love about Monsters Inc. bowling for screams, and made it, well, good. If you were game enough to walk in on 13 year old me in his bedroom on any given school night, there was a 50% chance you'd find me on my PSP tossing a gravitationally challenged bowling ball into a bunch of penguins. The other 50% you'd find number 4, hey, Bullworth Academy's Carnival. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, Bully is the most underrated game of all time. Imagine the pitch meeting, it's GTA but in a school, conceptually flawless. The perfect game to play when you're housebound for 6 weeks with a bone infection that was supposed to kill you within 72 hours, and you need to project all the teen drama you've missed onto a fictional boarding school's pixelated clicks. What's more is Rockstar have officially announced that the Bully 2 sequel will be released on the 15th of- Psych! The only reason Bully's Carnival isn't ranked higher is because it's not technically one single minigame. It's a collection of attractions that give you a break from playing Nazi dress-ups with Gary the Sociopath. You can even take a date. Because what's more romantic than being chased away by a cop on an electric scooter that you bought with prize tickets you won by betting on dwarf fights? Number 3. Red Dead Redemption's Texas Hold'em Poker What better setting for complete immersion than the Wild West, the birthplace of modern poker? When Facebook Zinger Poker just doesn't cut it anymore, and you're craving something a little more lifelike, but you're still too antisocial to play with real life humans, Red Dead's got you covered. The AI's balanced, the dialogue's quirky and fun, and above all, it feels real. There we go. 
Somebody put on his big boy pants this morning. Hmm? I'd be surprised if I hadn't spent more time playing poker in Red Dead Redemption than I'd spent playing Red Dead Redemption. And just like in real life, if you lose, you can kill everyone at the table. Number two, FIFA's Ultimate Team. You're probably wondering whether this is even a mini game, and that's exactly why it deserves its spot on the list. Ultimate Team literally went from being a test project side game on a AAA soccer sim to the main reason people play FIFA. In 2019, EA reported that Ultimate Team accounted for 28% of its overall revenue, outselling FIFA itself. Hardly a high school get-together went by without a match of FIFA, a tournament, or a duel for our self-created FIFA God wristband. You might say we took this game too seriously, but we say, yeah, no, you're probably right, actually. If you've known me for more than six minutes, you'll know that I'm a slut for card games. And speaking of card games, number one. Witcher 3's Gwen. Love it or hate it, there's good reason so many players affectionately refer to Gwen as the main game. Every Gwent lover goes through three phases. One, why am I playing this stupidly basic game that I can't even seem to win? Then two, okay, I guess there's more strategy than I thought. And three, if you insult Gwent, you insult my very existence. Despite polarizing audience opinion, CD Projekt Red delivers a mini game that ticks all the boxes. It's especially well balanced for a CCG, it's satisfying to play, and it ties in gorgeously with the Witch's rich lore. Very little compares to the delight of obtaining your first botchling right after learning about them in your epically macabre quest to free one. Gwent even went on to receive its very own standalone release. Congratulations Gwent, you win minigames. Okay guys, let me know your thoughts, what you liked, what I missed, and what your top 7 would be. Remember, every comment tricks the YouTube algorithm into thinking I'm worth promoting, so you'll be helping me reach my 10,000 subscriber goal.